So you're looking for a roommate, huh? You didn't mention you were a squid. I'm a Dumbo octopus, and that should have been obvious with my picture. Where do you live now, uh, Molly? Out there, in the Gulf of Mexico, beneath all those oil rigs and fishing boats, Dumbo octopuses live thousands of feet deep, where it's cold and dark, and the pressure can squeeze your eyeballs out. Wow, the Wi-Fi must be awful. Look, Zach, I'll be honest. I'm no ordinary Dumbo octopus. I mean, I'm sitting here talking to you, right? I'm here to help humans understand the importance of healthy oceans for our planet and for our lives. Hello? Zach, are you listening? Are you aware that the ocean helps keep our climate stable? It produces half the oxygen we breathe and a lot of the food we eat? The ocean is a vital part of our planet's life support system and nobody seems to realize it. And, uh, so I want to use your apartment as my global communications headquarters. Cool. You're not a smoker, are you? Ugh. Do you have any clue where the energy to power that cell phone comes from? Um, a battery? Ugh. Come with me. Uh, okay. Where are we going? <laughs> Relax. I got gotcha. you. No selfies. Here in the U.S., a lot of our energy comes from oil and gas drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. Wow! It's huge! There are like dozens of them! Thousands of them, actually. There's an enormous energy industry here in the Gulf, and it's a big part of the economy. Why has everybody come here to drill for oil? Good question, but we're not going to find the answer up here. Where are we? Welcome to my home, Zach. You're on the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico, one mile deep. Does this thing have a bathroom? Hey, Maggie. Hi, Molly. What the heck was that thing? Big fin squid. And this is a cold seep. Those bubbles you see are methane. Cold seeps are places on the seafloor that release chemicals like methane and hydrogen sulfide into the ocean. Some cold seeps also discharge oil. The Gulf of Mexico is a hot spot for cold seeps that release oil and gas into the ocean. That's why there's so much oil drilling in the Gulf. At cold seeps, oil and methane seep out of the seafloor naturally, but it's a tiny amount that doesn't cause damage. In fact, the biological communities around these seeps have adapted over time to very small amounts of oil and methane in their environment. Whoa, like, what do you mean? At the very base of the food web, bacteria actually use the oil and gas from the seep to get their energy and then they provide energy for other animals in the deep sea community. The oil and gas deposits have helped create a unique ecosystem here that provides a home to all kinds of unusual sea life. It's those same oil and gas deposits that attract all the offshore drilling. I'll tell you more about that later. I had no idea there was so much life down here. It's so cold and dark. We like it cold and dark. Sunlight's overrated. You've got some weird looking friends. And now I can add you to the list. My friends aren't so weird once you get to know them. I can't wait. So, how about it, Zach? Still looking for a roommate? Sure. You don't like sunlight, huh? No. I had a roommate like that in college. I'll pick up some curtains. Molly? Hey, Zach. Nice place you have here. Where can I set up? Um... Your room's the second door on the right. Thanks. Hey, Zach. You remember Maggie, don't you? Um, yeah. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Zach. Say, now that we're officially roommates, how'd you like to meet some of my other friends? Sure. Like who? Whoa, how'd you do that? Remember I was telling you about the cold seeps down here deep in the Gulf of Mexico? Yeah. Well, if you remember, cold seeps release chemicals like methane and hydrogen sulfide into the ocean, and even small amounts of oil. And because of this, they form a unique habitat. Around cold seeps, there are rock formations and reefs where some pretty cool creatures live. For instance, wherever you see cold seeps, you can usually find tube worms. Tube worms? You mean those things are animals? Yep, tube worms are pretty amazing. They look like bamboo. How do they eat? Good question. Up where there's sunlight, the food web starts with plants, or in the shallow ocean, phytoplankton. 
They use photosynthesis to convert sunlight into a food source. But down in the deep ocean, where there's no sunlight, some animals rely on a process called chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis is where, instead of sunlight, chemicals from the cold seep are converted into energy to fuel the deep sea food web. This happens with tube worms. Inside tube worms live specialized chemosynthetic bacteria. It's a symbiotic relationship. In exchange for a safe place to live, the bacteria inside tube worms convert chemicals from the cold seep into a food source for the tube worm. Whoa, my mind is officially blown. This is a cold seep with a brine pool. It's kind of a lake on the bottom of the ocean. How's that work? The water in the lake is saturated with salt. In the gulf, this super salty water is squeezed up from the sediments at the cold seep. It doesn't go anywhere because it's more dense than the seawater around it. So it settles and forms basins and pools on the seafloor. The oil and gas flowing from the cold seeps will slow down over time. And eventually, deep sea corals colonize the area. Whoa! There's actually coral living way down here? Yep. And just like the coral reefs near the surface, these reefs provide important habitat for lots of animals. Want to meet some of them? Sure. That's a chimera. It's related to a shark. And there are all kinds of crabs and other crustaceans. There's a squat lobster. Boy, he needs some dental work. That's an anglerfish. Down here, some animals can create their own light. It's called bioluminescence. Why do they need light? All sorts of reasons. They use light to lure prey, attract mates, confuse predators, warn others. When your world is pitch black, you adapt by using light to communicate. Wow, I thought the deep ocean was just a, a lifeless void. When it comes to understanding the ocean, we've barely scratched the surface. That's why we have to get the word out. Which reminds me, we should probably be getting back to our global communications headquarters. You mean, our apartment? Yep, there's work to do. Like, paint the bathroom? No, that's not where I'm going with this conversation. You mean like, wallpaper the bathroom? No, I'm talking about something much bigger. Wallpaper the living room? No. What do you think of the couch? You sit on it too much. Hey, Zach. Molly? Surprise! I hacked into your video game. Pretty cool, huh? I'm testing my global communication system. Quick, look out the window. See that guy? Watch this. Hey, you. You look at your phone too much. Awesome. Everyone's so obsessed with their smartphones these days. So I figure if I beam my message that way, people might actually listen. Wow. That's, um, possible? Yep, and you and your smartphone are going to help. We are? Yep. You see, an effective message needs compelling visuals. That's why I need you to shoot some video for me. Video? Of what? <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah. We'll just, um, yeah. Let's get some video of a few things here on the surface. Like that fishing boat over there. But it's just a fishing boat. That's no ordinary fishing boat. It's a deep sea trawler. Holy cow! What is that? Let's get a shot of this monster. We can't really talk about the Gulf of Mexico without talking about oil rigs. Got it. The Gulf of Mexico has one of the biggest oil reserves on the planet. That's why there are so many companies out here drilling. How do they know where to drill? That's what those ships do. They have instruments that can locate the oil. What was that noise? The ship's towing a seismic air gun. It's used to find the oil and gas reserves. How's it do that? It shoots loud blasts, which hit the bottom and reflect back to the ship. With the right equipment, they can locate buried oil and gas deposits. Look, they're making another pass. Let's get a look below the surface. Ow! I know, super loud, huh? My ears hurt. Yeah, it hurts the animals down here too. Whales and dolphins live in a world of sound. These blasts totally disrupt their ability to navigate, communicate, and find food. Here comes that deep sea trawler again. Let's head down to the bottom and see what's happening. Um, okay, good idea. They're catching fish and other creatures that live here. In a matter of seconds, they clear every living thing from the seafloor. That doesn't seem like a very smart way to catch fish, by destroying their homes. No, it's not. These ecosystems take hundreds of years to recover. And that's if they recover. Remember that big oil rig we saw up on the surface? This is what the other end looks like. So now you're going to tell me this is bad too? 
it's not as easy as all that. Oil and gas production are a big part of the economy around here, and people need energy to- Power our cell phones and cars and, well, just about everything we do, right? You got it. But oil from these wells leaks into the gulf all the time. And chemicals that are used in the drilling process can pollute the water. And every now and then, accidents happen. This is what's left of the Deepwater Horizon rig, which caused one of the biggest oil spills in history. I remember when this happened. It was a disaster. For the ocean, and for people too. Is that trash? How did it get way down here? We're like a mile deep in the ocean. You can find trash just about everywhere these days, even in the deepest parts of the ocean. Plastic is the worst. It never really goes away. What's that? More trash, I'm afraid. Old fishing nets and gear. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess. But it's not out of the food web. Plastic and other pollutants can end up in fish, and ultimately in us. We've got enough video to get us started. Let's head back to our headquarters. Mind if I ask you a really personal octopus question? Lay it on me. Do octopuses really have nine brains? Yep. Whoa, that's so cool. It's complicated being an octopus. Sometimes we need all nine brains. Humans have only one brain. I know. It's a lot to ask of one brain. I know. 